being in the shower, not knowing what, what's the difference between the shampoo and the conditioner bottle because they both feel the same. Can you imagine cleaning your floor in a wheelchair with a mop? Can you imagine accessing and opening some of our toothbrush packages with arthritic conditions? So I have a condition called retinitis pigmentosa and I have been blind since uh, I was 16 years old. As a, as a young child, I was able to see enough to read, but to read very slowly. And I lost most of my ability to, to read by the age of 16. And it was at that time I had to learn new ways of doing things. I always had, uh, you know, many people telling me generally I couldn't do stuff. So no was the a normality in my life. So when I wanted to go to university, I was told, oh, no, you can't. Um, we've never had a blind person. Even when I went to certain job interviews, I was told, no, you're not able to join this company because you're blind and you won't be able to use Excel, etc." So very early on, I had learned to actually not take no for an answer. And I think that's kind of developed some of my personality and made me who I am today. Inclusive design is about making sure that wh whatever we design, whether it's products, packaging, facilities, can be accessed by the maximum number of people. And in my daily life, a lot of these things are very, very difficult for me to do. When I met Sam, I immediately was inspired by her drive to help us think holistically about inclusive design. And the way to do that is by making our products, our packaging, our advertising fully inclusive to be usable by as many people as possible. The impact that we can have with adding features to a bottle that helps a, a, a visually impaired consumer identify the difference between shampoo and conditioner. It can be as simple as that. And it's opened my eyes to the opportunities that we have in front of us as we introduce new products to market. Personally, when I was in consumers' homes and when I was seeing the impact that it had on their lives, it was very emotional, it was, it was difficult uh, for the team to fight back tears as the, the participants are tearing up. The fact that P&G would even consider you know, doing something like this for someone with a visual impairment like was, was mind-blowing for them. Things that we take for granted, things that we don't even think about are, are stressors for those individuals. To have a part in eliminating that is really cool. Some of our best designs are inclusively designed by accident. If you think about using pods, they are so inclusive, it's unbelievable, so easy to use for people with multiple disabilities. And even if you don't have a disability, it's very easy to use pods. Swiffer came along and has really revolutionized how you mop the floor if you're in a wheelchair. You can do it with one hand, it's super easy, and there's no spills. Consumers themselves are so touched and blown away by the commitment of, of a large company like P&G to be thinking about consumers and, and inclusivity and accessibility. Inclusive design should be an integral part of the design as we launch any new product and make sure that it's a good fit for more consumers and a big delighter for more consumers. And when you think about the spending power of that collective group being three to four trillion dollars, from a business point of view, that's, that's a real opportunity to grow the company, to grow, to grow the business. We're on the journey, we've got a long way to go, but once I think people get this and are part of this journey, everything just snowballs into action and I'm, I'm noticing that around me and I can't wait till we actually make all, all of our products fully inclusive and I know we're going to get there. So for me, inclusive design is about touching and improving the lives of the world's consumers even more completely than we are doing today.